Hello, I'm Reza Rad from Redacad. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, data pipelines in Microsoft Fabric or in Data Factory as part of Microsoft Fabric, what they are, how they can be used, what is the relationship with the data flow, uh, and seeing a simple example in action. Let's get into that. Uh, Data pipeline is part of the data factory workload of the Microsoft Fabric. If you are not sure what Microsoft Fabric is, you are new to the subject, I have a different video, go and check it out and learn about Microsoft Fabric. Uh, it's an end-to-end -end data analytics offering by Microsoft. As part of that, there is a workload for data um, transformation and loading uh, called Data Factory. Data Factory includes data flow and data pipeline. Data flow is quite a familiar subject for those of you coming from Power BI background. It is the Power Query transformation um, on the cloud, which we use to get data from different places, do the data transformation and load it in different destinations. But the data pipeline uh, is coming from the older Azure Data Factory subject. Data pipeline is a combination of activities, as you can see in this picture, is a combination of activities that you can bundle together. For example, you can create a flow of activities. You can say, for example, when this is done, after completion, do that, after successful or failure, do the other thing. Build a control flow of a set of actions and activities. These activities can be quite a lot of different things. It can be uh, for example, running a stored procedure, it can be activities such as running a script, um, even control flow activities such as a loop activity using for each or a conditional type of activity using if condition. You can have activities such as Office 365 Outlook, which will send an email, uh, copy data activities, and one of them is actually data flow activities, which is probably the most interesting of all of these because uh, data flow activities give you ability to run a data flow gen 2 as part of this. This means that you can build a data flow gen 2, a data transformation, uh, get data and data transformation using Power Query, <clears throat> which I have explained a very simple example of that in the data lake, in the lake house uh, video um, that I published uh, before this. You can check that out. Uh, using that, you can do all the data transformations you want and load the, uh, load the data into the destination that you want. Now that can be part of this uh, data pipeline. So then what is this data pipeline? If you are familiar with SSIS SQL Server Integration Services, this is similar to the control flow <clears throat> that we had in, in SSIS. It's a place that we define the execution flow of the tasks. These tasks doesn't have to be necessarily related to the data transformation. It can be anything. It can be sending an email. It can be a loop criteria, like loop through this set of actions until a certain uh, condition is met, sending an email, um, running a script. It can be a lot of these, but it can be also data related activities such as copying data, running a stored procedure and things like that. And then inside these tasks, because we, uh, be inside these tasks and activities, because we have data flow. So the data flow part of that is really like the SSIS data flow. This is where you actually transform the data combination of these two, the data pipeline and the data flow gives you a really good uh, experience of, um, of building an end-to-end -end, uh, ETL or extract transform load uh, flow of execution. Um, so these two are not really um, replacement of each other. Data pipeline is not coming to replace data flow or data flow is not coming to replace data pipeline. They are complement of each other. You work together with these to build an end-to-end -end solution. A lot of things that you cannot do with data flow, now you can do that with data pipeline to complement data flow. A lot of things that you cannot do with data pipeline, like in Azure Data Factory, we had mostly a uh, in data ingestion um, technique. Um, we had, of course, SSIS to load SSIS into the data factory, that way we could have done some data transformation, but now you can use data flow, which is power query, very easy to use and powerful transformation engine. Combination of these two is your 
ETL. Now, uh, let's talk about how this data pipeline really works. So it is one of the, um, it is one of the um, data factory uh, object workloads. So to get there, you have to start from, let's say, if you are in Microsoft Fabric portal, you can click on Microsoft Fabric and then get to the data factory workload from there. When you are in data factory workload, then here you have the option to create a new data pipeline. Uh, so the new data pipeline, when you create it, you just specify a name for that. Uh, and then you get to the pipeline editor, which is in the same Microsoft Fabric portal environment. Now the example I'm going to show you is a really simple example because learning about data pipeline is requiring a lot of uh, different videos itself. So this is the data pipeline editor. I can do some simple uh, data uh, related activities such as copying the data, things like that. Or I can start by creating an activity. Uh, a number of activities are already here, or I can go to the activities tab and start building these. For example, let's say the activity I want to build is um, a set of uh, processes. For example, I want, I want to run a data flow. If that data flow runs successfully, I want to get notified with a message saying that what time the data flow has started, what time the data flow has end it, right? So I can start this with creating a variable for start time, a variable for end time, and then building a message for start and end. So uh, we have a activity called set variable. I would just add that in here. This is how activities add. And you see at the um, at each activity, we have some settings beyond which I'm going to apply, but we also have a bunch of, let's say, um, trigger outputs, for example, what happens if it is completed or skipped. Uh, this is a skip, I think, uh, uh, this is uh, an successful completion of that. This is failure and this is just a completion regardless of failure or success. And you can connect it to other uh, activities. So let's say on this activity, I can set the name, but let's just skip that part. I'll create a new variable. I call this variable start time. And I set the data type of that as a string. We don't have date time type here. So I create that, then I can assign a value. Now this value can be created by some system um, variable called dynamic content, which you can get there using Alt Shift D. Um, and when you do that, Alt Shift D, yeah. Here it comes. Here you have the expression builder. Now this itself again requires a separate set of videos to talk about, but I'm mostly interested in some uh, functions that gives me the current date time. So I would use UTC now, and this will call that function. So it's a separate expression language itself. Now, um, this is my task or activity. After this activity, I want to run data flow. So I would add a data flow task in here and I can connect the success on success of this to that. So that is how actually I build the, um, the flow of things. In the data flow task, I can run an actual data flow. So this data flow then would show data flows that exist in my workspace. If I somehow go back to my workspaces in another tab, or let me just duplicate this tab where I can go to the, uh, to the workspace so that you can see what I have in the workspace. Um, so in this workspace, I have created some data flows already. You can see there are a couple of data flows. Um, this data flows, if you want to know more about them, go and check out the Lake House uh, video that I had before this that shows you how to create this data flow. So I have this data flow that I want to run. Uh, this basically gets data from a Excel file in OneDrive for Business and it will uh, then uh, load it into uh, Lakehouse. Now here, even on this, I can do some notification on completion or on failure, but I want to use the flow of things here so that you get to learn how this um, really works in action if you want to do other actions. So this is data flow running. After data flow completed, I want to set a variable. So I can, uh, I can actually uh, have a set variable again and connect this to that. So this now means that after these are done, uh, I want to set a variable. This time I'll create a new variable. I called it end time string again. And here I would use 
again the function for UTC now to get the time now and then the last task I want to add is Office 365 Outlook um, this editor uh, isn't let's say yet fully uh, ready to play with a lot in terms of the like the layout design you see every task that I add it it, it changes the layout a little bit but still you can work with it so in here I can actually connect to uh, to where I want to do my configuration um, which is the Office 365 account that I have um, you would be asked to log in the first time you use it I already done that you assigned who you are sending the email to the subject and the body and each of these can be dynamic content itself so you can actually have a list of those whom this is going to and build something like that. So for um, those who ask, we don't have something like a um, scheduled uh, report of um, SSR scheduled reports, which you can send um, data subscription to the people. You can do that with data pipelines and data flow somehow. I probably would do that in a different video, but these are all possible because you have dynamic content in here. Uh, anyway, this requires a little bit more expression to show you. Uh, so I have this already completed. I'm going to show you there. So the expression that I use for this is something like this. Your data flow ran successfully. A start time was this. And this comes from the variable that we have and end time is this again this expression language itself requires learning it's not a complex expression language but it would be something useful to learn so now that i have this uh, i can actually run it and you see this is the previous execution i'll just run it and you will see that this also has the monitoring features of it which you can see how this uh, runs and how uh, the execution of this is done. So the set variable is done. The next, which is data flow is running at the moment. Um, the UI takes a little bit of time to reflect what step is running. And when that is also run and completed, the last one, and then finally the one that will send an email, which apparently there will be an email um, for me to receive with those details. Uh, so that is a really simple um, data pipeline. But the point here to learn is that data pipeline is something that would complement the experiments of data flow. Uh, if you use these two together, you have a, a lot of power. You might say, what is the difference between data pipeline and um, Power Automate then? Well, um, there are differences in licensing, of course. If you have Microsoft Fabric licensing, you get all of these in your license. Power Automate wouldn't be part of that. Um, if you um, want to focus more on data transformation side of things, then data pipeline would probably give you some more options. Um, for example, you can run some notebook uh, scripts and things like that, which might be slightly different to do that in Power Automate. So this is part of your overall experience here versus the Power Automate would be a slightly a different experience but you can do some of these actions using power automate as well uh, to build a successful etl um, a data flow might be enough but it would be much better and more enhanced when you combine it with the data pipeline i would have much more videos to explain about the details of data pipeline that expression language different activities that you have here some examples like the example that i mentioned that you can do things such as sending email to different group of people with their different data uh, exported as CSV file and things like that. So it's a big potential to use this. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI and Microsoft Fabric these days. And until the next video, bye. Mm -hmm.